Welcome back to another episode of the Canon on the Boom and Bust channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today doing a review, a uh, spoiler review for Avatar The Way of Water or Avatar 2. Um, yeah, so I wasn't going to go see this movie. I really wasn't. Um, I, I, I knew that it would probably get some love because it's James Cameron and all that. Uh, for the Oscars, but I have figured, well, okay, it'll be kind of predictable, special effects, all that stuff, and then it'll be whatever. I don't really need to see the movie. And then all the hype kind of came about this being the best picture and James Cameron possibly for director and all that. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to go see this. Not like actively against it, Three hours definitely was something I'm like, uh. And the first one I didn't hate. I didn't dislike. I, I thought it was cool. It was it was pretty decent to me. And while I thought the 3D was interesting, it didn't blow my mind per se, like uh the rest of the world. And I haven't watched it since that day in the theater. So and going into this so disclaimer i don't remember what was set up and what wasn't but um i haven't watched that since and so obviously since the first one there there's been a lot of critique about it and kind of what it borrows from but i i think i took away an important lesson from this movie and i i was thinking this um sometime in the last few years but i think this movie really cemented it i think the paint by number stuff is is necessary sometimes uh and that doesn't mean the entire movie the entire script um it doesn't mean half the movie it might be certain scenes or certain beats as they say um and i think that's okay i think people like that um obviously we want new and creative things and I think this movie delivers that, but there's obviously some uh, beats that are familiar. And while I don't think this was like a straight ripoff, like some people might say, or the first one was, I still feel like they added and gave us their stuff in a, in a very original form. So if I, I think about it like music, especially music today, where. Um, a lot of the, the people in the generations below me are realizing that, oh, all this music was sampled. And even, I guess, in my generation, um, well, I think it was more openly discussed, but still sometimes people will be surprised at how, where this stuff came from. And so I think of it like that. Um, no one is like, oh my God, you sampled somebody, you know, this is terrible. No, they, they want to see what you do with it. And so there's things from not even movies, from before movies, from the, you know, um, the Greek tragedies and obviously Shakespeare and all these types of things. There's a lot of beats. And it's just like, how do you fit it into your world without copying too heavily, you know? Um, and so I think for me personally, that these things are needed. And there's a reason why, you know, crowd pleasing movies make so much money even when they aren't super, super original, um, the ones that make the most money are kind of giving you that comfort food, that familiar cooking. And so, again, that's not me saying that's this whole movie is, but I'm just I was thinking that while I was watching some things where it's like I, I know what's about to happen eventually. And so I don't know how exactly it's going to happen, but I know what arc this character is going to be on. And so uh, but I, I was OK with that. And and I and I felt like, you know, why am I approaching that with a negative connotation instead of saying, OK, let's see how they go about it and how they do it. And I just really enjoyed it, man. So uh, this movie, I guess I didn't say that part yet. I thought this movie was amazing. I thought this movie is the best movie of the year. Now, I would not say that this is a great year for um, best pictures. I think as an Oscar person, when you look back on this year, it's going to be definitely a year for a lot of acting performances. Um, the writing, I think, um, you know, is decent, but we do have a lot of movies that are kind of more mainstream. 
Um, even though I love the Woman King and what that does, that's more mainstream. Top Gun is super mainstream. Uh, the Way of Water is mainstream. Um, Banshees in the Sharon is different, but it's accessible. Uh, Glass Onions mainstream. So I, when I look back in this year, I think what we're going to see is the acting, especially if you follow the races, you're going to know there's a lot of good performances that did not or that are not going to get nominated. But anyway, um, I do think it's the best movie of the group we have because it's just it, it's the best culmination of everything. Um, I went into it understanding that James Cameron had pulled a lot of strings to wait a lot of years to get to the point where he can deliver this technology and it's supposed to be game changing. And it was, man. I, I found myself a lot of times just sitting there like, how did he do that? And maybe I felt that way with the first one. That was so long ago, I don't remember. And I was a little kid. <laughs> but now I'm just like, how did he do that? Um, and I think what he doesn't get enough credit from or for, at least from what I've heard, People talk about, obviously, they're going to talk about the Navi, but I think he should get more credit for the technology he thought up for the humans and everything. I, I find myself really intrigued by that stuff, um, just the way it moves and the way it looks like the little machines that kind of move like crabs that they use to like grab and stick stuff, but then they can tuck the arms in and turn it to a submarine. Like, it's a lot of cool stuff. I think they introduce more cool stuff in this movie than star wars has done with any of their new stuff uh most of that i mean if not all of it is the exact same stuff that they're pit, uh cherry picking off the original trilogy and in the prequel so um i think at least from the first one to this one the step up in technology is really cool but i think the story like i said a lot of familiar moments the overall feeling is familiar but still, I think it's a good escalation from the first one. There's definitely some logic things that I didn't make sense to me, and I'll get back to that. But overall, I thought it was entertaining where it gripped you in, whether that was with the visuals or the performances, um, and it kept you engaged throughout the movie. Um, and again, I just thought it was it was a great blend of everything, like... It, it is some, you know, funny moments. There's some cheese. There's some good action. There's some danger. There's some spectacle. It it, it kind of has it all. Um, I felt watching Avatar the way people talked about watching the Fablemans. I didn't feel that way watching the Fablemans, but I felt that way watching this, where this was like, this is a movie going experience. This is really fun. So I really enjoyed that. And, um, yeah, the technology was crazy. I mean, the 3D was great. The 3D was cool. I don't know if it has jumped as far as some people made it seem, but I haven't watched. The last movie I watched in IMAX 3D was Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And, obviously, just with the pure colors and everything, the nature, this was way more beautiful but I don't know if the 3D itself, like just what 3D is, like good 3D makes it seem like it's kind of near you. I mean, I think that's what it's always been. But I think the way they shot it and the way they was able to bring it to life is impressive. But what's really impressive is the Navi. I mean, from not even the marking of like how high everything is and when they touch it. Like, the way stuff is set up so the Navi, like, touches stuff. And they always seem to touch stuff that's, like, way up high. And, obviously, someone with a lesser budget would avoid that interaction. But not even that. I think the texture of the skin is what gets me. Especially dealing with this movie in so much water. It looks like the water is rolling off actual skin. And I just don't know how they... I just don't... I have no clue how they did that. So, it was just... It, it made it feel immersive, uh you know whenever they interact with humans but whenever they interact with nature too and it didn't really feel like a bunch of cg stuff a lot of it uh felt seamless from when they're going under like ducking their head underwater to popping their head up the lighting changes and it's all seamless it doesn't look weird or wonky it looks like it's real it looked like it looks like how something actual in real life would interact with the environment. So that 
that part was impressive and stuff. But um, man, do they make you want to go out and save the planet? <laughs> they really make you hate these army people. But at the same time, America definitely. But the whole world—if the world was going down, we would ravage any other planet. We'd be so ruthless. So um, obviously, seeing that stuff stirs it up in you and. And you get wrapped up into that emotional part. And, and James Cameron wasn't scared to go there. But that's why I'm saying it's a good blend. Like, it is the spectacle. But they do get dark. And they do show some things. And they're not scared to really go there um, appropriately. It's not the whole movie. It, it's, they pick their spots. And I thought they picked the spots well. Um, and then I thought just bringing up this whole which they didn't even really dwell on it too much, but bringing up this whole interbreeding thing going on, uh, we didn't really get to find out why the one girl who is the daughter of Sigourney Weaver, we don't really find out how that happens and what's going on with her. But we know that, and it's weird because I think I remember that, the uh Jake Sully like actually changed into an avatar or to a Navi at the end of the first one. So the fact that his kids are kind of half breed is kind of interesting to me. Um maybe it's just in his DNA. So but you got one son that doesn't really look different, but one has like the human hands, and then the one who is the daughter of an avatar. And she is, she's got the human hands. And again, we don't know what's going on with her. And then you got the daughter of Slang, or the daughter, the son of Slang Spider, who he weirded me out. I'm not going to lie to you, man. The the And I'm sure this was part of the commentary, but the cultural appropriation was, it was too much for me. It was too many angles. You had him, but then you had the, the dead, um, um, what are they called? Is it Navy? I feel like it's another one. I think it's Navy. But anyway, um, Marines. There you go. You had the dead Marines that came back. And then obviously they're just who they are. But then they start trying to do some of the things the Navi do. And it just uh, uh, it gave me the heebie-jeebies. But hey, that's what it is. This is the perfect movie to watch after Andor. This is like a lighter version of that type of occupancy and takeover. Um, and so that that part, I thought, I thought it was good. It was just a lot of issues about parenting and bloodline and um, just a lot of ways they mixed it up. I thought that was cool. So, yeah, man, overall, I, I just really, really enjoyed the movie. I had some issues with some of the logic because the thing is, this is all predicated on Jake basically saying we're going to run away. And then they, they, they just want us. And so we're going to run away or we're going to give ourselves up, whatever. And it just and I get that. The, the, again, this is kind of one of the themes you saw coming. They, the movie was there to say, Jake, wake up. You got to fight for our home. And I, I, that's fine. But how they arrive there doesn't make sense because at every corner, Jake is kind of like, um, I know how they think. I know what they're going to do, blah, blah, blah. He, he is, you know, I guess a soldier. And so he has the understanding of how that army operates. However, like he falls under this thought process that, they just want us, and then they're going to leave everybody alone. You know that's not the case. Again, I haven't watched the first one in, since the first time I watched it. I don't remember what the mission was uh, from the first one. I don't know if it's exploratory or what. And now they have this, um, I guess, membrane, mucus, whatever, from these uh, creatures that can stop human aging, okay? And so now that's that for and then another thing on a side note, the man said this this vial is probably worth eighty million dollars. Eighty million dollars to stop human aging. Now I do get that if you got multiple people bringing it in, now you got a good supply, but it doesn't seem like it. It's only coming from one type of animal on this planet. And like the founder, you even if you had something that could stop aging for a year. That would be worth trillions, 
People would pay crazy money for that. So to have a whole vial and be like, it's only worth 80 million, that's insane. But anyway, the other thing is he like Jake Sully believing that they're just they just they use all these resources to get revenge. No, they're obviously occupying this this planet. And even though you weren't there to hear, hey, we're we're gonna set up camp and try to settle here for humanity. You know that's what's coming. You know that you could never live in peace at all if these people are here. Even if they left you alone and said, we're not going to mess with you. You know that eventually some conflict is going to happen and they're going to make a choice. So, um, again, appreciate the movie. But all the moves that Jake was making, I'm just like, bro, you, you know that don't make sense. You know that's not how that's going to play out. Like whether, you know, whether it's the hostage situation, which we saw a million times, come here or your kids die or you go there, they kill the kids and kill you. Like you got to you, you got to understand how it works, especially when you you have the leverage. So you have the leverage of the planet and these people are coming here. And then the fact I thought this was a little bit of a cheap cop out, because obviously when you say a year later, you could explain a lot, especially when they talk about they got robots that can build buildings in six days or whatever. So within a year, they have this whole infrastructure, which I'm not mad at. But they landed there burning down trees with a couple robots and some soldiers like a year and nobody stopped them from building this massive infrastructure. They're all in one place. So I thought that was a little bit of a cop out. I was just like, you just had to have a really big attack to stop them from even getting set up or anybody getting back home. And this would have been over with. And y'all just kind of let them set up a base. Um, so that part. But yeah, just overall, I just thought Jake, like, running from the forest is not going to help. Um, running to these people, you're just going to put them in danger. And then you kept putting out your family kept inconveniencing that family. I they some nice people because they struggle very hard to even let you stay. And then immediately your family is the cause of all types of trouble over and over again. Uh yeah, I just I just thought Jake's choices was dumb. Speaking of dumb, last thing, his son, don't remember the names, but the the young son that at least seven times just disobey what his dad said and cause damage to the point he finally got his brother killed. That was one of the things I saw coming from the beginning. Um, but still, he just kept doing it. He just kept doing it. And he's like, oh, I'm a loner. I'm alone. I know how it feels. You guys don't get me. And I was just, that one I was I was annoyed at. I'm not, I was actively annoyed at that kid. Although the choice to bring, bring him together with that one sea creature that was an outcast, that made me feel different about him. But for the most part, it's just like, I, I start throwing my hands up. Because it was just like, it was so many times he did it. I was just like, bro, y'all need to kill that kid. Y'all need to lock him down and do something. You're like, that's what jails is for. It would put that man away. He just caused too much trouble. But yeah, I guess in the last thing I'll say, Spider never changed his his uh, breathing mask, unless I missed it. But I feel like they showed us multiple shots where he could have changed the breathing mask once the ship crashed. But he didn't, and he knows that breathing mass has a tracker in it, or at least he knew and maybe forgot in the moment, but I feel like he kept that on purpose. I don't know. I don't know. He's obviously conflicted, but it just really felt like he uh, he, he did that on purpose. But anyway, so that's it for me. Uh, well, I guess I give it a grade. If I had to give it a grade, man... It'd be pretty high. I'd probably give it like a 96. I have a 96. It's an A+. Plus. It's an A+. Plus. So that's it for me, man. Go down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And remember, if you heard his official canon.